pray for him. And I, I think that's so very important uh, that we get prayed for because, you know, I don't want to be me, but I want to be the Lord Jesus Christ working Amen. through me. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray together. Father, we thank you again Father, for this day. Father, we ask you now, Lord, that you just touch me, Father. Lord, that you anoint me from the tumps of my head to the soles of my feet, Lord. And God, that you anoint our ears to hear and our hearts to receive thy precious word. And Father, when this day is gone, that God, we can leave this place and say within our hearts, it has been good to be in the house of the Lord. And we thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. You know, it was several years ago, probably about 40-some years ago, I stood in a little church just right down the street from here. I had been through so many things in my life. I struggled. My life was broken into a million pieces. My life was totally ruined. And I went to church on a Wednesday night there and being invited once again. I attended once before, just a few times. And, and, and that night was a special night. The people were standing there, and one would jump up, and one would testify and tell how good that God was. Another one would jump up and tell how that God healed their body. Another one would jump up and say, you know what? God made a way where there was no way to be made. Amen. And I stood there with a broken heart. I stood there just as lost as I could be. And I stood up, and, and there was not a, you could hear a mouse eating cheese a mile away. I stood up and they thought I could just hear a whisper from the brother. What is he going to say? A rough looking character that I was. And I stood up in the middle of that crowd. And I said, listen, I'm lost. And, and I want to be saved. Amen. Oh, that night I got saved by the glorious God. Oh, my Lord. And the blood of Christ has come over me. Washed me. Made me whole again. And that's been over 40 some years ago. Well, I heard somebody several weeks after that. Somebody, I heard somebody come to me and said, uh, well, so-and-so, they wouldn't tell me who it was. Somebody said that they're just going to watch and see. Well, it's been 40-some years ago. na 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 boo-boo, amen? amen? Hey, it's been 40-some years, and I'm still saved from this day, from the tops of my head to the soles of my very feet. Yes, amen? amen? It's very important for us to cherish our testimony. A testimony is very, very important in a believer's life. I wrote a book one time, and it was called uh, Help, Call 911 Because the Church is Hurting. And in that book I wrote, and I said these words, you know, you should never witness to anybody unless at first you know that your life is right with God. Because it's very, very important because, you know what, if you try to lead someone to the Lord and then all of a sudden lead them to the Lord and then they see your lifestyle is not matching up with your testimony, then it ruins their life. Yes. It's very, very important. If you got your bomb tonight, if you would please, uh, turn with me to the book of 2 King, chapter 5 and verse number 1. And I like to preach just for a few moments. I Boy, I tell you, I'm getting early. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those 20 minutes preachers. I've been a Baptist preacher for over 30 some years. I was a Pentecostal holiness preacher for about three years. And so I became a Baptist mutt. Amen. Now I'm Church of God. And so, well, I attended a little bit of Church of God back, when, back in my younger days when I had hair. But uh, I guess the Baptist took it right off of me. But look with me in 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse number 1. Now Naaman, the captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master. An honorable, and an honorable because by him the Lord had gave deliverance unto Syria, and he was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leopard. Here we find the story that as the Bible begins to unfold about the details of this this great general that that uh, that was had favor with the uh, the king and and yet God used him. Did you know that God uses the enemy sometimes to bring back the righteous? He yes. always does that. But so we find here that that the Old Testament is filled with 
with very beautiful and, and gripping stories. And, and one of the most beautiful is that a Naaman, who was a mighty man, uh, who was a, a general, who met the miracle man of God and, and, and traded his misery uh, for peace and for contentment. You know, Naaman is a picture tonight of a lost man who realizes his needs. But more than that, my friend, that we'd have to look at the condition that, that Naaman was in. First of all, the picture said he was a great man. He was a general. The army people, they, they, they listened to him. He could tell you to go, go through this and, and you'll do it. He'd tell you to go to there and you have to go. Whatever order that he gives to you, you must do it because he was the general there. He fought hard. He brought victory unto his country there. And God used him to punish the sinning of Israel. Now Naaman had everything going for him. He had fame. He had honor. He had success. He had wealth. He had respect. He was the most powerful person besides the king in Caesarea. But yet the Bible said, but. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, that word right there changes everything, doesn't it? Here was a man that you would love probably like to be your next door neighbor. Matter of fact, if uh, uh, he, he was so good, you probably want to put him on the deacon board or whatever, my friend. Because of his, his talent and because of his respect and his, and his characteristics that he had. But he had leprosy. He had a disease, my friend, that, that no one could cure. See, in the Bible, that leprosy. It is, it is a horrible disease there. It's, it's, it's like, uh, and, and paraphrasing and, and a parallel or a phototype of, it's a type of sin. Sin is leprosy. It's in hereditary. It's in the blood. And my friend, don't you know tonight that, that there was nothing that he could do. I imagine he went to every doctor in town. I imagine he tried every pill, every herb that he could get a hold of. To try to heal this leprosy. Several years ago when I was just a young man in the ministry there. There was a little boy, a young boy and his sister there. And both of them had leprosy. I've always read about in the Bible there about leprosy there. And it was one of the most horrible things to look upon. Their hands were like a crusty looking white. And they had these bandages of galls wrapped around them. And, and it smelled because the flesh began to be deteriorated. And, and, and there was no cure for it. Just the pain and the agony that they had there. And so sin is a, it's like, it's like leprosy. It's a sickness. It's, a, it's hereditary, my friend. And there's no cure for it. But, I like that. Sometimes but's good, amen? Because but, there's only one cure. And only God can cure leprosy. Yes, only God can cure sickness. Only God can cure sin, my friend, in our life through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. So here we find this great man that was sick. But yet, there's, then the story changes. It, it talks about how, how good he was. It talks about... His character, it talks about uh, all these things. But yet, there was a little Jewish maid. And she was taken into captivity. During the time that Syria had invaded Israel. And this little maid had, had um, came to his house. And, and she waited on Naaman's wife. Always doing, maybe cooking, maybe cleaning, whatever that needs to be done in the house there. And one day when she was walking through the house, she came to Naaman's wife and she said, and she said, would he be the prophet? Or would that he would the prophet would heal him? So the story just goes on and on. And, and the thing about this was that she was testifying about how good that God was to her. Let me tell you something. This maid right here, she had every right to be. She could say, I wish Naaman were hurt every day of his life. She had the right to do that. She said, I, I wish he could feel the pain. She had the right to do that. But no, my friend, she didn't. She was concerned about her, her, her master. She could have feel, been filled with malice. She could have been filled with bitter because she was taken into captivity. She was taken away from her family, her, her, her friends, her homeland. But yet here she was 
boast about how good God was in the midst of her captivity, in the midst of her of all the things that's going on in her life there, she was testifying of the goodness of God. My friend, your testimony makes a difference. Just like this little Jewish maid right here, she boasts about God and what God could do. She's, um, she said, did, did, see, did she ever see God heal uh, uh, um, uh, um, leprosy? No, but God can, amen? But she boasts. A lot of times, you know, we, we get in a bad situation. The first thing we want to do is throw our hands up and quit. Walk out on God. But not her. She's in a bad, she's in a foreign land. She's a slave. She has to do whatever the master says for her to do. But she did not allow anything to steal the joy and the victory that she had in her life. May I say to you today, my friend, we should never let anything rob and steal the testimony that we have in our life. I believe it was the testimonies that I heard there at the Thomasville Church of uh, the Thomasville uh, Assembly of God that that day that I got saved. I believe it was the testimony when I heard people that how that God can touch and heal somebody, how that God can make a way where there was no more way to be made, where God could do this and God can do that. And my friend, I needed God to come down and I needed God to touch me and I needed God to save me and I needed God to heal my soul. I needed God to work a miracle in my life my friend and I said I want to be saved yes, amen. Yes. because of the testimony of the believers right. yes. in Jesus Christ yes. 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 oh my friend our testimonies is so so valuable valuable in our lives that we should never ever ever lose sight of who we are right. in Christ Jesus Oh, I wish that we were like, I wish believers could be just like this little lady. I just wish that we could be just like her, that my friend, to have a confidence in God that cannot be shaken. I don't care what comes or goes. I, I don't care how many storms comes in our life, that nothing can shake away the testimony that I have, that God is good and God is the Lord of my life. Well, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know what that means? He said, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm a part of him. I'm glad that I'm in him, that he's mine, and I'm his, my friend, because that's, uh, he's all I can have. Right. He's my all in all. There's nothing else in this world that I can go back to today. Why? Because I come to find out in life that I'm nothing without him Amen. and the only thing I got is a testimony right. and my testimony that I had today as I shared with you will matter somehow you never know my friend who you're sitting beside of you never know my friend when you're in the grocery store and someone's there and you smile or whatever you do you never know what who you're going to touch in your life my friend by being a testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. Several years ago, I was in the hospital <clears throat> getting some x-rays. I kind of felt kind of funny right in there. And I told my doctor, and she said, well, we better go get an x-ray for that. So I went and got an x-ray. And I was there. And um, I come out of the x-ray and went to the little sitting room. And I heard the little girl talking to somebody. And then she hung up and she says, I just got off the phone with your doctor. Your doctor told me, said, tell you not to leave. Because she knew that, boy, if I've got that door, I'm gone, man. I don't like the hospital. And I was so, and she said, the surgeon is on the way down. I said, oh, man, I didn't, I didn't, my wife wasn't there to hold my hand. Come on now, y'all know all about that. And, and so I was scared to death. I went out there in the hallway. And this man is just wondering, what, what in the world is going on? Doctor said, don't, don't, tell him don't to leave. The surgeon's on the way down now. Man, it must be bad. Boy, I was getting nervous. And so happened a little boy, a young man in that room came out in, the hot, in, that, little, in that little waiting room. And he came out to me, he says, sir. He says, I, he says, I noticed and I heard what they said. 
told him not, not to leave, and the surgeon's on, on the way down. He said, I don't know what's going on. He said, but I see that you're kind of a little worried. He says, can I pray for you? And boy, we prayed right there, and the surgeon come down. He said, oh, I'm just going home. We'll take care of it next week. Amen. A testimony of a young man. The Bible said that you're the salt of the earth. Hello? The Bible said that we are the light of the world. Wow. And my friend, the salt ever loses its flavor, it's no good. If you ever lose your testimony, friend, it's no good. Our testimony needs to be pure, it needs to be honest, it needs to be humble before the Lord Jesus Christ that others may not see you, but yet see Christ that lives within you. It's not me, but it's Christ that lives within me that makes the difference. A testimony. And so through this little girl that Louis Jewish made, that the word got back to Naaman that, hey, Naaman, that the little maid said that there was a prophet down so-and-so down there that could take care of you. Something had to spark in the Naaman's life. For him to be able to have confidence in a, in a slave. Maybe throughout the day, then throughout the weeks and years that she was with Naaman's wife and Naaman there in the house. There, maybe she was always singing the goodness of the Lord. Maybe she's always talking about how good that God is. You see, my friend, when people's around about you and you're talking other stuff, you'll never be able to talk about Jesus if you're not talking Jesus first. Amen? It's always going to be about Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and nothing else. If you're going to win this world for the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend, your testimony must shine like the light. My light didn't. told Marty the other day. You know, I got to say this. When we first came here, man, we didn't know nobody from Adams from Apple. Well, we finally know some people who went to another church there for. But Marty came over and just introduced herself, just made us feel so welcome. And she, one day she was over there and she was talking about bringing them over here. And I said, you're right here proselyting. She says, what's that? She said, oh, I'm letting my light shine. Amen. You got to let your light shine, my friend. We're living in a dark world today where people, that there's broken people, my friend, is hurting and people are crying and people has a need in their life and they come to a dead end street and they don't know which way to turn, my friend. And you can be the light, my friend. And you can be the soul shaker and just let it shake all over the place. Yes, amen. Let people see Christ. Several years ago, I was preaching. I used to preach a lot in the church of God in Christ. One of the largest African American Pentecostal holiest church in the world. And I used to preach a lot in their church. And one day I was preaching revival. And I was preaching all week. And this gentleman kept coming and kept coming and, and kept coming. And then the last night he came. And he came and he said, I want to be saved. He said, but most of all, he says, I want to know this Jesus that you've been preaching about every day. Oh, my friend, that's what it's all about, my friend. It's bringing people to the cross of Calvary that they may be able to find Jesus. And when they find Jesus, their sins can be forgiven. Their minds can be healed. Their bodies can be touched, my friend. They can have a new life in Christ. That's what it's all about. This testimony of this little Jewish maid made a difference. In Naaman's life. So much of a difference my friend. That he was willing. To go to this stream. First of all you know. He, he went the wrong direction. First of all. He, he went to the. Thought maybe possibly that. He'd go down there to the. Prophet's house. And the prophet would come out. And, and the prophet would lay his hands on him. And do all these things. But the prophet sent his servant out. And told him to go down to the river of Jordan and dip seven times. He said, what did he tell you to do? He said, tell me to go jump. Uh, I like that. Hey, man, go jump. 
down the river, Jordan, the muddiest river. They went, why can't I go over there? Nope. You see, my friend, God don't. God is not like Burger King. Have it your way. Hold the pickle, hold the lettuce, special order, don't upset us. But God gave a special plan to Naaman. He left, my friend, in fear him because he thought that maybe the possibility, because he wanted, the, because of his royalty, he thought that this man would come out. God doesn't matter who you are. God ain't going to bow down to you. You're going to bow down to God. And so, then the servant said, Listen, Naaman, if it asked you to do something hard, would you have done it? And so Naaman said, okay. So I can almost imagine this. And here goes Naaman down there with all this pride. Man, sometimes you just got to suck in your pride, amen? Boy, that's the hardest thing to do. With it. You, know what, you know what my problem was when I first got saved? Was I was afraid what I was going to tell my friends. Ain't that something? Uh... Only thing they brought with me was heartache and misery. Now I'm afraid of them to tell them that I got saved. Yeah. Come on. Boy, it wasn't long, but about two weeks not hanging around with somebody. Somehow the word got out. And one of them walked down the street and said, Man, I heard you got saved, and I'm so glad. I said, Really? And boy, right then, boy, I tell you, it was on them, brother. It was no more holding back. It was full blast for the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were coming to me uh, and asking me to pray for them. Drug lords, uh, drug dealers, drug addicts, alcoholics was coming to me and asking me to pray for me. Boy, our testimony makes a difference. Yeah. Makes a difference. Can I just chase a rabbit real quick? Let me just chase this little rabbit real quick. And, and, I, and I, I bring him back. I catch him. Listen. Several years ago before this time. There was time in my life. That man I, I knew God was calling me. I knew God was speaking to my heart. And friend when people... When God speaks to your heart, and when people, and God speaks to that heart or this heart, and they come to you, listen. Every one of us here tonight needs to know how to lead somebody to Christ. Yes, I went to a man one time, and, and I felt, man, I just, man, I just, oh, I just needed something. I, man, I was tired of living. I was tired of waking up every morning doing the same old, same old, same old, same old, empty, blind, man, hurting from pain the tops of my head to the soles of my feet. Man, no direction in my life, my friend. And I went to him, and, and guess what he said? Well, let me call so-and-so, the youth director, and get him over here and let him talk to you about the Lord. Man, when I got out that door, I'm gone. Too late. Listen, friend, you can't wait for Pastor Green. You can't wait for Brother James. You can't wait for Brother Ron. You can't wait for that. But you need to know how to lead someone to Christ because that moment right there when the heart is tender and the Spirit of God is moving yeah. upon them, that's when they need to know the way to salvation. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Boy, I thought, well, and I've always, I never forgot that. Never forgot about that. And I always said, well, you know what? I'm always going to be ready when somebody comes to say, I want to be saved. And I want to take them through this book. And I want to show them by the authority of God's Word how that they could be saved and know that they're saved uh, from the tops of their heads and the soles of their feet. There's no ifs, no doubts, no maybe or in between that you can know that you're saved and you're cleansed uh, and you're separated for the glory of God. Know that. A testimony. A testimony. Right. Several years. I just gotten saved and you got to realize that man, my life has not always been like I am today. Man, when I was a young boy, I was as mean as a rattlesnake. I mean, man, I'm telling you, I was a boxer. It didn't, didn't matter what comes or goes, I I, I was just pure mean. The devil had me. Hook, line, and sinker. 
And it just, but man, I was just so bound. And I got saved. You ain't going to believe this, but I'm going to tell you right now, I was a shy person. I was shy. Matter of fact, the first time I testify, this thing right here called the podium, it was going back and forth, back, and it go that way, and, and everybody go, woo, wee, woo. Man. I didn't know where. And this is what I really, I really think Marty and others has come to us. Because I, I failed. Hello? I failed. Just a few weeks in my walk with God, I failed. I didn't know what the Bible was even about. I didn't know what Matthew, turn the book of Matthew. I don't know where Matthew is. Right. The Sunday school class finally had to stop and, and teach me a little bit about the Bible. Because I knew nothing about the Bible. Right. My mom was an alcoholic. My dad was an alcoholic. We didn't go to church. We lived our life like we wanted to live. And the devil said to me, man, you really messed up this time. That's it. That's it. Did you not know that God only gives a, a, a one chance and that one chance and you just blow that chance? It's no more for you, buddy. I used to go to just a church and just come for Sunday services. Man, I wasn't going to ask you where the Sunday school class was. I'm too embarrassed. I'm shy. But oh, got weak. Didn't know nothing about the Bible. Couldn't get food. Spiritual food. Couldn't get spiritual nourishment in me to help me to grow, to help me to stand fast. Man, I walked out of that church that Sunday morning, right before Sunday school started. And I was going to get in my car. And I was going home. And I never ever was going to come back to church again. Because the devil just told me that I could never be saved again. Because I have messed up. And God only gives one chance. Man, I believe that. And so happened to Sunday school teacher, Frankie Ross. Maybe you may know him. He was coming late. God always has a plan. Amen. God always has a plan. I love God and his plans. And Frankie come late and he said, where are you going? I said, and man, you know, I just tell it all, man. I, I just tell it all. And I told him. And he started laughing with a shriek. Man, I want to roll my sleeve up and just knock his head off. Here I am thinking I'm going to go to hell and, and I've already messed up and, and you want to sit there and laugh in my face, my friend. And he said to me, maybe you learned John 3.16 when you first got saved. I did not learn John 3.16. But what I did learn was these words, my little children that are writing to you, that you sin not, but if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Lord Jesus Christ. Boy, I, and I didn't understand that. And Brother Ross looked at me and he said, Brother, he said, let me tell you. He says, listen. He says, I he's going to put it in your terminology that you can be able to understand it. He says, God's to judge. I said, oh, I know him pretty good. He says, Jesus. I said, I got one of those two lawyers. I got one of them. Steve, you're the guilty one. Oh, yes, I've been there before. He said, look, he said, the lawyer looks at the father, and the father said, Jesus said, Father, forgive Steve, for he has sinned. And my friend, that, that very moment, I felt the hand of God come down upon my shoulders and lifted me up, and I've been saved. I've been preaching the Word of God, and I've been telling the story ever since then. My testimony makes a difference. Your testimony yes. makes a difference. And so Naaman, I can just imagine him. Well, look, y'all guys, y'all stay up here now and y'all y'all watch. Make sure nobody comes down the road and gets in that Jordan muddy old water and he goes down one time and two times and three times, four times. You know, when you start going and, and nothing happens, you know, you say, 
Well, I don't think it's going to work this time. He went six times and probably got a little bit worried. He said, well, I already went six times, made a fool of myself. I just go the seventh time. And the seventh time you went down, glory to God, he came up and his skin was like a new man. Oh, my friend, God had touched him. He was healed, my friend. Why? Because of a testimony of a little Jewish maid over there who was concerned about a master who, was, who loved him even in the crisis that she was in. Yes. Friend, your test, no matter where you are tonight, no matter what situation you are tonight, you may be in the darkest hour of your life, but let your testimony be a light. Yes. Let your testimony be a light. Because there's so many people in this world is hurting. Yes. Oh, I see it every day. Yes. I see it every day. The hurts. The cries, the pains, every day. Yes. And the only they, thing they're waiting for is somebody. Get just tell them there's a better way. Right. Yes, sir. There's a better way. Yes, sir. You don't have to live this way no more. You don't have to do that anymore. You can be free. What God done for me, He'll do for you. He's a respectable person. Right. That's the message that the world needs to hear. The message that the Lord's yours made gave out. I serve a big God. Even though I'm in captivity, even though that I'm away from my family, even though in a way that I've been kidnapped, He's still God. He's God in the morning. He's God in the noontime. He's God every day, every hour of our life, my friend. And He will always be God. Right. If I can leave you anything tonight, it is this. Let your testimony shine. Because that's all we got. You may be the only Bible that somebody may ever read. Right. And it's so important. I'm going to close in this. My brother, Donald, he was always a roamer. He roamed all of his life. And sometimes you may see him here, and maybe you may see him next year, maybe you may see him two years from now. One day he came home, and, and he was there at the house. And You know, God speaks to your heart, you know? And man, I saw... Something in his eyes I never saw before. I saw something that was lonely, something was scared, something that, that I've never seen before. And I looked at him. I said, Brother, I said, You come home to die, didn't you? He said, How do you know? I could see it in your face. He said, Yeah. He says, I'm dying. And I said, can I tell you about Jesus Christ? He said, I just wanted you to, that's what I wanted you to do. I wanted you to tell me about Christ. And that day I led him to the Lord Jesus Christ. Two days later in the hospital, my mother was there. And my mom said, won't you just roll over and get some sleep? My mom said, rolled over. And the last word out of his mouth was, Get thou behind me, Satan. Wow. And he died. <laughs> a testimony of a brother that led another brother to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your testimony is very important. Don't lose it, but use it Amen. for the glory of God. Amen. Brother Pastor. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. What an encouraging word this evening. Amen. He made me think about something. I've told Sherry through the years of being me. I said, if I die... 
before you and you have to buy a headstone, the epitaph should read, he fought the fight, kept the faith, well done, etc. as Paul said. I said, but if something happens, I don't finish this thing the way I'm supposed to. Just put on there, he was a sorry scoundrel. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta press on, Amen. Paul said, "I've kept the faith." Thank you, brother Steve. Challenge my heart. We get weak sometimes in our words, don't we? In our testimonies, and what God is really wanting to do in our life. So that's a good word, a word for myself. Um, remember Saturday morning, brother Horace, our Golden Club. At 11 o'clock on Saturday, if anybody's able-bodied, um, we're going to take all this Christmas stuff down and pretend it's uh, 4th of July or something. Uh, I just need some arm lifting. I, I got a bum shoulder. I'm trying to nurse it a little bit. And uh, I just need some a couple of guys to help us once we get it down, get on my trailer and get it back over in that building. And then uh, I won't have to do it by myself. Uh, that's 11 o'clock after the Golden Club uh, breakfast. Amen. Well, I want you to stand with me. Um, end, end with a word of testimony this evening. God is faithful. Amen. No matter what we go through, we've got to hold on to the unchanging hand of God. Penny, you trained him well. I'm so proud of you. I tell you what. Let's just pray together before we go. Father, we do love you. We do honor you. We do thank you, Father God, for thy word. Father, thank you for the scripture of Naaman. When Naaman didn't want to do it that way, but yet he went in obedience, and Father, he, he was healed. Father, I thank you for this congregation. I thank you for, the, for this church. I thank you for their heart. I thank you for their willingness to jump in here and make it happen. Father, I thank you, God, for the testimony of this church, Thomasville Church of God, that they are faithful. Father, help us to continue on to be faithful till you come again. Bless these that are not able to be here tonight, Lord. So many people suffering, God, so many things going on. I just pray, God, that you just help us all to become more of what you would have us to be. We need your strength. We need your power. And we need you in all that we endeavor to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands and come out friendly. And uh, have a good week with the rest of the week.